All right, so for uh, the first thing we want to do is bring the site back to life. And remember, I gave you handout number four last time. If you don't have a printed copy of it, you'll be able to print it during the next break. Uh, at the moment, though, you can look at it either on your printout or you can look at it in the network folder. And remember, the network folder in the campus WordPress folder, I've got campus e-commerce number four archiving WordPress. Either the PDF or the uh, editable document, they're both there. We'll look at the uh, PDF in general, part two, the second half of it, and then we will do this together. Now, we will do the backup and the resurrection a few times together, but then by the last week at the latest, you should be able to do these two steps on your own because you will need to do these steps on your own when you graduate from this class you leave the nest and then you're flying out on your own little birds you're gonna need to do it all yourself so together we will we'll do it a few times but then you'll need to do it yourself eventually so looking at that handout in general we're gonna do the first part of it archiving the site we're gonna do that at the end of the day after we've worked on the site some more what we need to do now is this part here. So in general, here's the big idea. We need to, uh, we do need to create an empty database in PHP my admin, but then when we bring the site back to life, it will attach itself to that empty database, but bring itself back uh, from uh, Thursday. So in a moment, we're gonna go to PHP my admin, we're gonna create the database, then we need to copy the files from last time into the WW folder of the um, of the computer, and that's a little typo there. It's WAMP64 on these computers. So we're going to copy the project in there in a moment. Then in the web browser, we need to initiate the installer PHP app. Remember, you get two files: a zip file and a PHP file. The way we use the PHP file is in the web browser. It'll ask us to fill in a few things. What's the name of your database? What's the password, etc.? Proceed on that. It'll then unzip itself, put all the files in the right place, set itself up, and then the site will come back to life. Yes? Do you have to use the same uh, name for the database that you use when you go on the site? No, you can use a completely different name of a database. Yep. So this will bring our site back to life, as we will do this in a moment. There'll be some remnant files we need to get rid of since we brought it back to life. Uh, and then we can continue to work. And whoops, I put here number one instead of 11, but that's that. And then we've got something here also, rewrite module. We'll look at that a little bit later. And then we've also got a mention here of Duplicator Pro. So here, uh, full disclosure, that is an affiliate link. If you follow that link of mine, it is an affiliate link. So I think I get like $2 or something if you buy the uh, Duplicator Pro through my link, but if you can do it on your own, that's fine. And uh, the regular Duplicator works very well, but I've found that Duplicator wor Pro works better when you're working on big sites, on sites that are hundreds of megabytes. Our site right now is only like 12, but once you get up to uh, a site that's got a lot of pictures, a lot of text, a lot of products, the site gets bigger. The Pro version seems to handle all of those files better. So it is a good investment, and it's between 30 and $40 per year, something like that. Not a big investment. But we'll get back to that. So what we need to do then to resurrect the site, log on to PHP my admin. Now, I purposely left out step zero right here. What is step zero before we log into PHP my admin? Start WAMP server, exactly. So on your desktop, you double click the WAMP server icon and let that start up. None of this stuff will happen, none of this stuff of localhost will work without WAMP server. So that's step zero, if you want to make a note of that. Um, the handout was sort of like um, already, if you had done part one, you have, I mean, if you've done the first part, you've got WAMP server running. And then part two, well, assume, that assumes WAMP server is running. So if you want to make a note, when you're starting brand new on a day here, step zero is turn on WAMP server. OK, step one. I'm going to go to the browser, any browser that you want. And then we'll go to PHP My Admin to uh, create a database. 
So in your web browser, go ahead and go to localhost slash php my admin. I would recommend, uh, this is especially worst in uh, Chrome, whenever it pops up right here, okay, yeah, that's what I want, localhost php my admin, do not click on these. It's very subtle here, but all of these are saying search for this, search for this, search for this, search for this. This is not going to take you to localhost if you click on that. As a matter of fact, it's misspelled. There's no colon here. HTTP colon slash slash etc. These are searches. Don't ever click on these. These are, these are going to search the internet about what is localhost. Type it and press enter. Don't uh, select the suggestion. So that'll take us to PHP my admin. If it didn't work at this point, you're not running WAMP server. So remember to double click WAMP server off of our desktop. Okay, there's maybe also a space in here. Log into PHP my admin. What's step one and a half? Well, how do we get past this screen? Mm -hmm. And the password is? Nothing. Blank. Yep. So step one and a half. From this screen here, you log into the whole database management screen. It's username root, password nothing. Now this will vary eventually when we migrate it to a real server. And I'll walk you through that. I'll use my GoDaddy server, uh, my GoDaddy account, and I'll show you how it would differ in the real world. But that's still like two weeks away. Okay, so I've logged into PHP my admin, and this simply says create a database. But well, we did this a few times. You go to your database button at the top there. This is the list of databases that currently exist. So we're going to create a new database. We can call it whatever we want. In my handout there, I suggest one called WordPress. But again, you can call this whatever you want. And just to show you this time, to really confuse you, I will call it Kitty Cat this time. So you can call your database whatever you want. The instructions say WordPress. I'm going to call it something else. And we'll see how that differs in a moment. Yes? I checked it in. I'm sorry. Oh, right. Let's check. 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 Did you already work on a different name, on a different database, with a different name? But uh, this one is a new one, right? So you want to work on the old one, you have to do the name. No, these names don't matter. Uh, this was actually asked a moment ago. Uh, these the names of the database don't matter because you're going to connect your old site to this database, so it doesn't matter what you call this at all, even if you have worked on a previous site. So whatever that was you created before, you can always find it to work on it? Yeah. The database from before is all stored in the zip file that we're going to work with in a moment. It'll just put it into this database placeholder that we will use in a moment. What you're doing your Google search, you need to take that. Once it's running like this, you're good. The next is you need to go to your web browser and go to the PHP my admin screen. So that's when you go to HTTP slash slash
in a moment to bring back a site that actually has something. Like this. All right. So in this um, in this step, all that I'm doing is creating the the database, and the database that we're creating now does not need to have the same name as before. So just to put it in the notes to have it here, um, just a note. Um, a previous a, a a previous install of WordPress. How can we say it? Um, a a re a resurrection of a site does not need to have a database named the same as when it was archived. Uh, long-winded way to say simply whatever name you previously had for a database it doesn't matter um, for us a week later that if it's called anything else and from here then after I create a database I click create it shows on the left side that I've got a new database in my case I called it kitty cat it can be called anything just remember spaces, capital letters, all of that matters. So I'm keeping it very simple by having it lowercase, no spaces. And I would say then advice, database name, should not have uppercase, and symbols, and spaces. If you created one with symbols and spaces, it might work. We're not too far away from you doing it again and creating another database with a simpler file name. Uh, so that's what I would recommend. No spaces, special characters. If you choose to call your database with capital K and all of that, please write it down. Because when you come to help, when you come and ask me, I, it doesn't work. And then I point out that you have a capital K. Well, that was your mistake for not remembering you put a capital K. So. My handout further then says, OK, copy your archived site from the last time into the WW folder. How many of you brought back your site on a flash drive from last time? Not enough of you. That's OK. Because I'm going to give you a copy of my work at the end of every day. If you'd like to start from where I ended last time in the network folder, at the end of the day, I will always put a copy of my site. Question? Um. It's a zipped uh, version of the old site, the, the previous two files. You want us uh, to expand it before we nope. move it over? Don't expand it. Here's what you should have. The last time what we did was we, we made the copy, we made the archive, and we get a zip file and this PHP file. Make sure both of those files are in a folder. I asked everyone to do this last time. If you took your files, put your two files in one folder and copy this whole folder. That's what we're going to copy into the network, into the www folder. So in my case, uh, I will copy that right out of my flash, uh, right out of my network folder. I'm going to copy the whole folder. The name of the folder doesn't matter, and I'll come back to that in a moment. But I'm going to copy that, as my notes say here. Uh, copy your archived site. I guess I should say copy your archived folder from the previous step into your www folder. The www folder, remember, is in the local disk C, C as in cat, inside of WAMP64 folder, and then inside of www folder. This is where I'm pasting from the network folder a copy of the site from last week. And we don't want to unzip the zip file, we want to keep both of those files together. Don't copy and paste the zip and the PHP into here. They need to be inside of their own folder. Then the notes. OK. So copy your archive site. Check. In your browser, access that installer PHP file. From the web browser, uh, I need to type in the address. Uh, the location to that zip that that PHP file. That PHP file is in that folder in the WW folder. In the web browser, 
as my notes say, HTTP colon slash slash double host slash the name of the folder slash installer PHP. Obviously, if you type January 1st, 2018, it will not work because in my computer right now, I have a folder called 2018.05.10. So obviously, I cannot change that every time we come in. This handout will always stay the same. But this part right here has to change depending on what is the name of your folder in the WW folder. So in the browser, I'm typing HTTP colon slash slash localhost slash 20180510 slash installer.php. Now here's another part. Don't type this mechanically. Don't type this robotically, just mimicking me. If your folder is different, if you call your site my site, if your folder is called my site uh, fall 2018, well, you're going to type right here in the browser what is the name of your folder where you've got your site files. And this again is what I said about avoid spaces and capitals and all of that stuff. Question? So the folder name, not the file name. The folder name, exactly. So in the WW folder, I have a folder called 2018.05.10. That's what I'm going to type in the address. Because when I type that, that's when it shows me the duplicator screen to do the next steps. So let's pause right here. We need to be sure that we're seeing this duplicator screen when you type your address. Is that working? Anyone need a little help on that?
on the address here. Today, it's going to be 2018-05-10, um, which is the date from last Thursday, when we bring our site back to life on, uh, on this Thursday. <coughs> when we do it on Thursday, that's going to be localhost slash 2018-05-15, because at the end of every day, I'm going to make a backup of my site and put it into a folder with the date. So every time we come in, this address will be different based on the date. But you see the idea is, to access your site, it's in localhost slash whatever is the name of your site. And on the first day, the name of the folder, the name of the site was WordPress. So we went to localhost slash WordPress. And then I think this last other time, didn't I call it WP or something? So localhost slash WP slash whatever. So that's going to change. That's going to change based on the name of your folder in the WW folder. Yeah. So you could basically use this for versioning then. You could. You could have different versions of your of your website in different folders. Or back which, it up if you screwed up. Yes, but you should also remember then you need different versions of the database. They're not all going to share the same database. So you could have different versions of the site in their own folder, but then you're going to need a database maybe named the same thing as the date. I named my database Kitty Cat. But you can make a database called 2018-05-10, and that's how you have the different versions of the site. So as long as they're all separate folders and databases, you can have as many copies and backups of your site. All right, so my handout here. OK, um, that was step 4A. For example, if the name of my folder was 2018-01-01, that's what I would type. OK, you'll be asked to fill in the server path, password, and all of that. The host is going to stay as localhost, and the name of your database and such, and the password, that's right here. This first screen, most of us, it said pass. The zip file is intact. It's validated and so forth. A couple of people had an error here, and um, we, we fixed it individually. Usually there is an error here if the backup isn't made properly, if the computer shuts down too fast, if you pull your flash drive out too fast, something got corrupted. So this might give you some advice on how to fix it. Hopefully if you've got older versions of your site that work, then you can use that to bring your site back. We'll look at this screen. There's some options and such we can look at a little later. All that we really need to do here is say, I have read and accept the terms and notices. So click that check mark, and then down here you'll see next. Click next. This is when the zip file is getting unzipped. So we never need to unzip it. It will do it for us at this point. And if you're if you're curious in the folder, now that folder's been unzipped. So you don't need to do the unzipping of your zip file. It will do it for us. It's a lot of files. It's probably around 10,000 files. So OK, we're at this point. Uh, basic way to resurrect or cPanel method. When we, get back, when we get to the end of the course and talk about migration to move it to a real server, um, that might matter. If you've got, for example, GoDaddy and Bluehost, uh, oftentimes those providers have something known as cPanel, a way to manage your server. So we'll get to that later. We're going to stay basic here. We're going to be basic today. And uh, we've got these options. Action, connect and remove all data to the database. That database I created a moment ago called Kitty Cat. That's what that's saying here. We have the option here to create a database 
from this screen. It's sort of either or, create a database here second, or create it first, like we did earlier. We already created a database, so this is going to connect to that database and remove everything already there. Host. Localhost. So we leave that alone. We're running all of this on localhost. Eventually, the theory here is, well, I'm going to be on victorsbakery.com. That's the host. That's the server. We're not there yet. We're in localhost. We're in, we're in WAMP server. Or if you're using the Mac, we're on MAMP. Database. What's the name of the database I'm about to connect to? In my case, it's Kitty Cat. In your case, I wasn't looking over your shoulder. I don't know. So if you called your database WordPress, capital W, if you called it my space site, well, whatever you called your database, so when we were back at PHP my admin is what you type here. And we will be able to confirm that in just a moment. User, the name of the account that logs into the database, which is root, and the password is nothing. That sounds exactly like the login for phpMyAdmin. It is. The login to get into phpMyAdmin is where you create databases, edit databases, etc. And it's root, no password. That's the same thing we use here, and it makes sense. We want to connect to a database with a certain user and a certain password. To confirm this works, click Test Database. You should always click Test before Next. In my case, it pops up success. We found your database, Kitty Cat. We're using that user. We're using that password. Nothing. Success. If you got a failure here, raise your hand, of course. But the thing that's most likely happening is that you named your database differently than what I'm expecting here. Yeah, right. 
so I can say that's here. No, I just want to go back to the Oh, well, I, I was having trouble, like, I didn't know you could not unzip it, so I was having trouble with the unzipping thing. You're so sorry. Right, and, and well, now I know that, but I just opened up yours. So I got yours. Uh, so I like sent you all the Yeah, so I've got to look at yours running right now. success right here you, you always want to check test you always want to confirm especially when you're being silly like me and changing database names and all of that if you want to keep it simple just call it WordPress and you'll always remember that but I'm just showing you here this database name doesn't matter the name of the folder of your site doesn't matter but it's got to be in a folder having your zip file and your installer file naked floating out here no it's got to be in a folder uh, those names don't matter, but there's this sort of uh, protocol of it. And when we get to this point, it says success. There's a couple more options down here. We'll come back to that later. Let's click next. You get a big pop-up with a warning. Be sure these database parameters are correct. Entering wrong information will overwrite an existing database. And I heard a couple of gasps. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Because we are working with a database that is brand new. I created a database a, a moment ago called Kitty Cat. It's a brand new database that never existed. This is just warning you. Be careful here. Don't put the name of a database here that is my main site. My main site. Right? That's going to connect and remove all data. That's why we need different databases for different sites. That's why it also gives you the option create one from this screen. So basically, every WordPress site uh, should have its own database. And that's what that warning is telling you right there. Yeah? Can the, can the database name be the same every time? Have... The database can be the same name every time, yes. It's just that every time you run Duplicator, it'll erase the contents of the old database and put in new contents. Which we don't care about because we're going to populate that database. Exactly. Exactly. It's going to populate the most current every time, yes. I'll click next. I read that. Great. I'll click yes. It's going to then install. It's going to think about it. It might do it quickly or not. And eventually, here. Um, this, uh, if you wanted to, from this screen, you can change the title of your site here, which is the same as if you had gone to Settings inside of WordPress. If you're using my site, well, it's called Victor's Bakery. You can keep it called Victor's Bakery if you want. You can change it to anything else. And right now, this is okay. Uh, this is this is your address for your site, localhost slash whatever. When this is when this gets published to Bluehost and GoDaddy and such it'll say a real address there. Obviously, don't change anything here, but it's going to say that if this were a real deployment, a real migration to a real server. And then the path will also reflect that. But um, it's just telling you here's, here's where it's being installed, on your computer, in your virtual server, WAMP server. Next. Uh, you see there for a moment it said updating the database pretty quickly. Then it got to this part right here. And if you had noticed, we were going through step one, two, three, four. Here's step four. In my case, um, report uh, zero notices, uh, general notices. There's no warnings. There's no errors. Sometimes you get warnings or errors here. You click, and it'll tell you what might have happened to perhaps fix it. Uh, there's also been on the top right corner info and help. This will take you over to the official duplicator website to get some help. But if everything looks good here, no, it's it, they're green. There's no red or yellow warnings. You want to click Site Login. Yes? This might be a, a down-the-road question, um, but if I have been asked to update a, um, an existing 
existing site, the WordPress site that's already out there. Mm -hmm. Is it best to like somehow make a copy of it and bring it onto the local host and work on it and you know, play around with it? That is very recommended, yes, and exactly. Uh, you get hired by someone, you log in, you, you use Duplicator and make a copy of it and then set it up in WAMP like we're doing and then you have a perfect copy of that site that you can change and, and break and fix and everything and it's not affecting the real one on the internet. It's a copy here on your personal computer that is not accessible by anyone except you. So that's what we would do when we get hired by a client that already has a site. We make a copy of it right after they hire us, we sign contracts and all of that. We make a copy of the site, we set it up on a local uh, server like you know, WAMP server, and then we go in and reverse engineer what did the previous designers do? What did they change and customize? How did they change their code? And then once we get a handle on what's happening on the site, we can either migrate it back online or now have a knowledge of it to do it live on the on the real internet. So here, if um, we're going to sign in, if you're using my site, um, my login here is admin and password. Now, I can't show you the password, but it says password. So if you've made a copy, if you've got a copy of my site, it's admin and password. If you're using your site from last time, I don't know what your username and password was. Hopefully you wrote it down. So I'm going to click login. Lowercase. So that takes me to the dashboard that brought me back to localhost slash the name of the site slash wp-admin. And I'm in this, what's that? The, uh, the username is admin and the password is password, all lowercase. So obviously I use the, the easiest things to remember but the worst things to use. You don't want to use admin, you don't want to use password and we'll talk about changing it later. But when it logged me into the dashboard, it took me directly to the duplicator screen. And it says, this site has been successfully migrated. Final steps. Optionally review duplicator at WordPress.org. That's funny. Now, now they say, optionally, go, go and give us five stars because we, we duplicated your site. And then secondly, remove installation files. Um, this, I would do this. I would click that. Uh, it's in my notes as well. What, what's happening is when, when, we, when we got your site into the WW folder, it only had two files. It had installer.php and the zip file. When we went through the installation process, the duplicator resurrection process, um, it unzipped the zip file and brought your site back to life and there's the database and everything. Well, what's left over is still the original zip file in the installer. So we've got now a site that's double the size because of the unzipped files and the zipped files. We don't need these two files in the folder anymore. I've got a copy elsewhere on my flash drive. So what this is saying is remove those old files. We don't need those installation files anymore. We've already brought the site back to life. Now we're ready to use it. So I would click that option there about remove the the old installation files. That's going to clean up right here. The installer file, we don't need to reinstall the site, it's back. We don't need the backup of your uh, database and the logs and, and the actual huge zip file anymore. It cleaned all of these out. And then in my folder now, you saw, you saw a moment ago in my folder I had installer PHP and the zip file. It's no longer there, so now the site is ready. We brought the site back. We don't have the original zip file anymore. We don't need it anymore. And then I'll hit dashboard on the left here, and we've got our site back. Wherever we ended up last time, if you want to visit site, that's where we ended up. The name of the site, there's the contact, about us, updates, Etsy shop, home screen. We've got the site back. Question? Uh, question right there, guys? No? All right, so if we got our site back up to this point, great. We're going to continue with this in just a moment. Let me pause here. Anyone having any trouble? I'm going to 
going to send out the sign-in sheet. Remember to sign in on this. Print your name legibly. The time that you got here, 6 o'clock. If you leave early, you can put a time out, but don't put one if you don't leave early. Print your name, 6 o'clock, pass it on. I'm also passing a pen. Oh. I'm sorry. I was trying to get into my compute, my site, but we're trying to get into your site, right? Sure. If you oh, okay. your site, if you made a copy of my site from the network folder, it's it's my site. Yeah. Oh, okay, but that's why I was trying to get into my site. Why would I get into my site? Your site. I didn't say my site. That's it. Yeah, Oh, okay. Yes. So, so from today, you can, uh, you can oh. work with your site starting from today. Oh, I see. If you take it with you. Yeah. All right. I, Sorry. It's okay. I have the option. I didn't even call it. I have my password. All right. Sorry. I'm not sure if there's a lost password. Thank you. Give it a shot. I didn't even call it. I didn't even call it. I don't know what it's like. So I follow the same steps for copy my folder and just do it again. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. you've got yours on that folder, so just put mine in a separate folder. All those steps again, and you should be able to do it again. Oh. Okay, sorry. Oh. Sorry. Oh. Now I'll just trust you to leave them out. I know, I'm not trying to do that. Sorry. Yeah. Well, no, she's not trying to do that. I couldn't figure out what I was going to do.
You're not able to download it at home or your computer must be a 32-bit computer uh, either or should work if 64 doesn't work then you you want to get 32 that'll that'll work fine All right, so continuing on my handout over here. Uh, okay. Um, the, yeah. If I look back at my old folder, how do I find that the name of my name is that name website? That's kind of um, complex in that in if you in your case you would have to unzip your zip file. You'd have to look inside your WP config file, and in there is the list of what your database name is, but not your password. It's encrypted. Thank you. So um, at this point, we've logged in to our newly resurrected site. It's an exact copy. It's a good idea to test the site, and all that really means is go look at it in the in visit site go look at the front end there's no graphics missing my text is there my menu items uh, that's a bit of an optional step usually this backup is a perfect copy of it but sometimes I do see that for whatever reason there's a hiccup and a picture doesn't doesn't get backed up or something and uh, that's it's a good idea to just browse your site a little bit and confirm that it all works that's my step right there, test it. That just means browse the site, click the links, make sure everything seems to be normal. You can then also, if, if to, to test it, you, what you could also do is um, you could uh, check your, uh, you know, your, your pages. You could go here in the, in the back end and, and take a quick look under pages and all of that just to confirm, just to make sure everything's there. I have then a step over here. Uh, let me just confirm something. Let me just confirm. So this is this is optional here. Um, I've noticed that with some people, when you install WAMP server at home, when you try to visit screen to screen, I'm in home screen. I go to contact. Sometimes it's broken. Sometimes the link is broken. And it seems that this is an, this is a way to fix it. So if you're ever trying to go from your screen from one screen to another. And it's just a broken screen, even though you know you've got the that screen in your in your pages here. Uh, this might be a way to fix it. So I just included that as optional, um, as a way to confirm that all of your links work. The purpose of this is to enable the use of pretty permalinks. This is what I mentioned previously about under your settings permalinks. The default was numbers in the beginning. The default was numbers. These are pretty permalinks in that it is real words. 
but sometimes if these types of links don't work, that's why I've got the note here of how to fix it. And this only matters in WAMP server. This should not be a problem in MAMP, and this should not be a problem when we put it on Bluehost and GoDaddy and all of that. It's just a bug that I found for a few people sometimes. And then again, lastly, uh, as you use your site and make a bigger site and more complex, I often see that Duplicator Pro works a little better on bigger sites. Yes? Well, this says click on your WAMP server icon, and then you'll find Apache. So down on your uh, down on your menu down here, remember we get the little the little green W down on your on your tray, whatever this thing's called down here. This is where it is. When you click on that, then you've got Apache and the rest. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're gonna get practice with this again. It only took us an hour, but next time. <laughs> We're going to get practice with this where it's going to be much faster. I bet you'll be able to do it in 10 minutes. You will need to do it in 10 minutes on your own eventually. Uh, but we'll get practice with both of these things. At the end of the day, we're going to make a copy of our site. This first part, we're going to archive it together. You'll need to do that on your own starting uh, next week. Uh, and then uh, on Thursday, well, we're going to uh, need to bring it back again after all the work we do today. So uh, we will do this practice on, on Thursday and then again you'll be able to do it faster. You will be able to need to do it by the uh, third or fourth week. And of course you'll need to be able to do this on your own when you want to put this on a real site on the real internet. So if you got this far, uh, very good. We'll take our first break. I'll turn the printer back on if you need to print anything. When we come back we'll work more on our site. <laughs>